Okay. Uh, I am talking about why we are modeling by components and, uh, and what does uh, actually does mean. I say, don't try it alone. <laughs> yeah. uh, we used to, to hear this in, in some uh, advertisement on the TV where they do strange things. But modeling by components is the a way to share science. So is a way to uh, do things uh, uh, cooperatively with other people first. Uh, what I mean by models? Uh, in the, uh, the things I have in mind, and <coughs> I don't know if you have in mind, you have to tell me if it's the same, is uh, something that is our uh, computer applications that are, uh, uh, they have equations, uh, ordinary differential equations. We will see uh, in this course many ordinary differential equations. But uh, uh, in the same uh, uh, framework, we are developing things that uh, solve uh, di um, partial differential equations, in the particular Richard equations and, uh, and other things on that side. Uh, the, um, the equations we are thinking about are mass, energy, and uh, mass and energy conservation, and. Uh, in case chemical transformations. Chemical transformation uh, meaning uh, uh, transport of, of pollution. Unfortunately, we don't have the, the time to see the, this part of the story, but we have one uh, direct uh, uh, consequence of what we do. We have modules to put with that. Um, when we think about uh, models, then also we think about parameters. When we do a, a classical course on hydrology, uh, uh, you talk about maybe the equation, but the people rarely talk about parameters. Uh, some one of you says that he is uh, particularly involved in calibration mo of models, meaning these parameters, which are, let's say, constants of the models, <laughs> has to be calibrated for uh, making the models than to reproduce the uh, reproduce the reality or at least give a, 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 a being able to do some forecast uh, some of you, of you in, uh, in your experience that I know um, is not used to, to this concept of parameters to be calibrated instead of things are ah, we do experiment in, in the lab and we from the lab we take the the values of these parameters, and then these are the parameters that we transport in, in also in the field. Unfortunately, this is not true in the experience of hydrology because uh, hydrology is complex. The, uh, all, let's say, the last decades of the last century uh, was passed uh, promoting the idea that uh, the landscape is very heterogeneous. And so for treating with uh, this heterogeneity, we don't, you, you cannot stay with a single measure. And we have, in any case, to adapt the hydrological models uh, by calibrating some parameters. And uh, finally, the, uh, the models are data. Data that comes from heterogeneous sources. And now we have, uh, uh, I will participate in, in, in a few weeks uh, to a conference uh, we, in which the, the main topic is from uh, data scales hydrology to data uh, to big data hydrology, meaning that now we start to have many data in every, every part of the world. Uh, this is particularly clear to the people that work on remote sensing. We have tons of data, but sometimes we don't have the models to treat with them, those data. <coughs> or even we don't know if those data are really taken properly, let's say, or uh, processed properly to give uh, the, the right results. So the idea behind the models we, uh, we are promoting is that uh, we start to, to build uh, an, infra uh, an infrastructure that uh, uh, looks at all these directions <coughs> and help people to get cope, to cope with them. Uh, someone of you knows, and someone of you actually used uh, one model that we developed in the last uh, 
two decades uh, with low geotops. Here's uh, uh, an example of this, uh, uh, of this type of models, which is uh, on uh, one big model, hundred of thousand of line of codes of usually very few <laughs> doing physics and the lot the, the big part of them doing other things like reading uh, reading uh, the data treating with other things uh, that code was uh, developed in a uh, monolithic <coughs> way is a bunch of subroutine even if we split the, the codes in the subroutines or uh, uh, function and things uh, it grow it grew actually in a, in a huge amount of code which is more or less monolithic in, in, the, in, do in the same uh, in the same code and there is a strong legacy between each part of the code uh, our experience is that uh, that code is hardly maintainable and uh, above all hardly developable we cannot uh, we, we have to do great effort to develop the, those parts. Besides, the, that code is in the hands of the, the main developers, let's say. Uh, if one, uh, in my experience, I am not a company, I am a university professor, so my uh, developers are PhD students usually. Some PhD students come in, take over the code, takes one year, two years to understand the code, and then in the last year do some modification. Maybe uh, during the year he doesn't understand part of the code, so he throw away part of the code that was actually knowledge to be saved, and add something other, and uh, the rest of the people that maybe use the same code are not aware of what he did. Even if he use uh, 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 GitHub or uh, things that we will see that uh, uh, make the, the source code public. So this is a, absolutely a bad way to proceed. Uh, we have uh, to uh, we uh, during this phase and at, at least ten years, uh, more than ten years ago, I, I uh, thought that uh, that was not possible to, to go that way. We have to split the code in, the code in several parts, maintainable for, uh, by people. Uh, joinable together and, uh, and uh, inspectionable by other people. So uh, there's a, a, I wrote here, this is absolutely bad thing for science and the way it is supposed to uh, process. Actually, uh, part of this presentation, I in this idea <coughs> took from other paper that I cite inside. Um, a revision of the code also, it is impossible. If everything goes well, actually you don't know if this is going well for just a chance. <laughs> no, it's not, not that way, uh, really that way. But uh, if the things goes well, uh, that's okay. At least you have a forecasting or something that seems to look going well. But if the, if the things go bad, you don't know where to look for. And so, uh, uh, model falsification, control of, the, of uh, where, uh, where there are the, the errors, where are the things that we have, we have to, to change, is very difficult to, to find. Um, <coughs> so, um, uh, the choice that I made, it is not the only way to do it. There are other ways that can be equally likely, maybe in some sense, but they are not so sure. <laughs> anyway, this is my way of thinking. Uh, for uh, uh, promoting the, uh, the, open, the, the open science the behind, uh, to, to make the progress, we also had to, uh, to do the code open source. So the first choice we did was uh, doing code open source and uh, to find a way to implement fr from the very beginning, from the structure of the informatics, uh, to be inspectionable, to be separated. We uh, apply the paradigm, same information ID, 
in, the, in informatics in which the code is structured by part and each part can be inspected by a single person. So it's this, and this inspection is bearable. It doesn't take for a PhD student years to inspect this part if he is or she is interested in, in just in, in that part. Uh, the other problem we have that we face is for, for who we have to model. Uh, which is the end user we have in mind. This uh, is a famous table in this uh, science, let's say, it's this uh, milieu of, of um, things, uh, which is uh, we have roles and we have users. Uh, roles means uh, what the people have to do. And here we have a hard coder. Some one of you are hard coders. Actually, uh, you are here for understanding what we are doing but uh, you in your uh, real life you do uh, you program you do programming so you are here and uh, you are probably a researcher so uh, we uh, you do work for research for uh, making science advance or uh, de development advance there are also uh, soft coder people that uh, doesn't think to the whole thing, but uh, maybe to part of it, uh, take uh, some specific point, uh, have a, 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 a tutor be behind that uh, drives you and say, oh, you look at these five lines of, of codes and uh, work just on that. You, uh, there is a new figure here, which is linkers, which is people that, and uh, many people in, the, in research are actually linkers. They don't de uh, actually develop the core code, but uh, simply take codes from different parts and links the codes to produce a final research or a final product, even using different softwares, actually. Uh, runners, students uh, are usually the runners, let's say, or uh, uh, professional runners make their code, they, they use just use the code for some purpose, their own purpose at uh, that time. And you have other, other things, viewer providers. Viewers in, in, in particular are part time user that can be, for instance, uh, people involved in stakeholders, people involved in taking final decisions. So we have, when we are developing software, we have, we have different figures, different um, different options in mind and the code the code that we write if you have someone of this category as our main stakeholder is different so the way we are doing the our code is uh, 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 try, try to find a flexible way to have uh, to serve more users uh, as possible actually this view is a little bit naive but after the experience, because uh, we sometimes realize that some of these actors here time, do not have the, the, the competence to, to actually do what they are doing in, in, in the right way. And so that this is a further, maybe I give a, a, a model with all these char characteristics, but then you, let's say, misuse it is. This is uh, practically, you do a model that has <coughs> certain limitation, then you give to people, and people use for everything, even in those parts that, uh, for instance, this is a, a, a practical problem. So what? Uh, the paradigm we choose was to uh, develop the, uh, mod, the, the, the code by component. What is a component? A component is a single part which is close in itself. I would say a monad in a, a monad in a, a unit things which is, let's say, close to for users. Uh, is a single bunch of code that communicate to specific interfaces with other part of the code. And obviously, there will be an infrastructure that has to manage these components. So you have uh, 
your components and one characteristic of your components you, you don't have direct access usually to that component or in the case that it is open source like in our case you have direct access you, so you can even modify the code but actually what is important for you is the interface how are the <coughs> interfaces are created uh, in principle also the components uh, should be written in a way that uh, the, your code uh, should be never modified. Uh, code can be expanded but not modified. You can do obvi you obviously you can modify also the code. But the, the attitude to, to, toward which we, we work is uh, addition, not modification. Because any modification of the code has then side effects on all the chain of things. And they, uh, closing the code in components uh, try to cut all the side effects of changing what is inside the component. Um, people, this idea of components comes from, uh, uh, let's say, commercial. Uh, Microsoft. Uh, uh, um, a software like uh, Word cannot be done if it is not made by components. There you have hundreds of developers that works and that you have to put together. That's another question. And a software like that cannot be managed if it, they are not made by components. But uh, uh, the, 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 this, uh, this idea kind of came slowly inside science. And uh, every, in any case, uh, uh, the first uh, um, uh, the <coughs> generation of modeling by components came to invasive, meaning that, uh, uh, yes, they uh, implemented type of doing components, but uh, the, the way you implement components was too invasive to the programmer meaning that the programmer has completely changed his perspective for doing programming. And that is a way not we, don't, we don't want to have. <coughs> and um, so uh, the code, uh, uh, nobody of us want to learn a language and then has to completely change the way he's programming because uh, yeah, he's uh, going to use a, a system by components that maybe 10 years after is not working anymore. So our system is also not too invasive. And uh, we have, uh, we have then to, uh, to cope with all of this problem and we, it, it is what we did actually. To sum up uh, the equation we already seen, uh, we also have in mind a larger role, the power of a researcher, which is, uh, you know, there, for instance, is uh, our, the first one block in the first slide on, on the top is uh, our, our scope, our, our work. Then many things are do, uh, done with models, data interpretation, strategies for policy makers, evaluation of the policies. So in principle, you can have also components of model components here that you can add. And our systems allows to, to also develop components and simulate without difficult to plug the, all the things together. The prerequisites that uh, I designed uh, with the people that worked with me during the time was that our code is open source, possibly programming language neutral, meaning doesn't care about the, the programming la language you use, but it's not uh, actually true in the sense that then, then we mostly program in Java now, but our system can uh, also use uh, um, Fortran, C++, Python, R. Even if the natural thing is, 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 uh, is Java. Works on every platform, not on Windows, not 
uh, not on Mac, not on Linux machine, on all of them possible. Um, also in kind of business ne uh, neutral, in the sense that uh, uh, we use GPL, which is not so business neutral, in the sense that you, uh, if you want to build a business on that, uh, you have to be able to do in any case. Because my PhD, one, just one third of my PhD students came in and doing research in academic or research institutions. The other two thirds was in companies or outside so, um, so they have to be able to use the or use uh, their <coughs> my code, our code. It's not the same my code, but it's our code. The other thing is that um, we, uh, as engineers, we look at uh, doing uh, uh, promoting code, very efficient codes, meaning they do in one second. Uh, a, a work that in, instead of doing in one minute <coughs> sometimes <coughs> and uh, for doing that sometimes we imply two years so for passing from one minute execution to one second execution we take one year of our work and uh, I believe that there is uh, some misunderstanding of our roles in that thing so uh, what we try is that we have to do, to do to be very efficient. A PhD student uh, has no time to, to spend one year to, or maybe some some specific PhD students can spend one year to move one software from one one minute to one second. But usually they have other problems to solve. So we have to be efficient, not just simply the code. Then there are a lot of technologies that we have. Uh, we have web-friendly uh, wrap can wrap, uh, wrap uh, legacy code, can use databases, can be compli compliant of standards like OGC Open G GIS Consortium of uh, QEshi, which is consortium of university for the for the advance advancement of biological sciences and others, using. It should use multi-core machines in a way that is transparent to us. That will be not the, the, ma the maximum of efficiencies, but uh, we, uh, we, we want to program, to program our ecological model, for instance, without taking care of uh, the, the burden of uh, parallel programming. It should be up to a point transparent to us. And this is what we, we will do. <laughs> Obviously, the work has to be done in the revision control management system, which is like we use Git. And um, we should have a standard way to place and dispose of documentation. So we've seen some uh, concept, a model, which is a model, which is a, a model component. Uh, maybe we didn't focus as much on uh, uh, interfaces interfaces meaning at the end the components works between exchanging data which has a declared interface I believe that uh, yeah. Americans invented the interface and uh, really <laughs> really in uh, uh, they, they, this is also uh, as a sociological aspect in the sense in that the United States leaves a lot of people that come from different experience in different cultures and that for not offending each other they have also to uh, uh, establish a way to interface each other and so they also transpose to software this concept and uh, we have a modeling uh, then we have a, a modeling framework and then we will have a workflow we meaning the way the software has to be work for doing obtaining certain tasks and the way also we work for <laughs> obtaining certain tasks and especially using the uh, we will be pay attention to the workflow so finally a, a small example that we will do at the end of this day with our simulation which is a water tank 
we have some input variable which is the rain rate, rate, rate duration, the top area where, where the rain goes and the outflow area where the, uh, the water com comes out. We will see a paper on that also, but uh, yeah, the results are kind of unimportant for us today. And then we, some, we have some water variable which is water depth, water volume and the velocity of water flowing out. So this is an, an example of a problem that we, we have to implement, or we should implement. And the, the, same, uh, the meaning of what it is, uh, the interface of the inputs, the interface for outputs. And then we can put other reservoir, for instance, other tanks in sequence, which is quite a nice um, metaphor for the uh, how hydrology is done at the certain level and put all it, it together. Obviously then, this is all a simplification of a very much more complex system, which is this one. And, uh, and when we do, we do a reduction where <coughs> you see our tank now is transforming a very complicated things. So this we have always to keep in mind these things, but uh, the way to do, we have to do, doesn't forget, all, all the stuff, and in particular, one thing of modeling by component, which is easier, is that uh, we have, this is a, uh, okay, is put in, in the, the reverse side down, but the idea is that, uh, you know, you have this energy balance and water balance in each part of this, each one of us, especially if it is a, a researcher, has a, an idea of, of how, these processes can be solved. Uh, besides uh, having an idea of how the processes can be solved, we have also an idea of uh, which is our problem and uh, which is uh, the part of this of complexity that we, have, we can simplify for obtaining our results. So the models are not only uh, dedicated to get the best science, let's say, but to get the results that we want and uh, to get the science that we need. We have to throw away the part that uh, are negligible for us. And so that's why we use components. And I think this is, this finished the first part of, uh, of the thing.